Java puzzlers. He survived all day of Vox days. Congratulations. And um, great content, by the way. I hope you liked it. And uh, this is the last session before keynote, so it will be something different. Um, any of you familiar with the format of the Java Puzzlers? Anyone knows those two guys? Josh. Which one? Joshua. Bloch. Right, and Neil Gaffner. Um, two of the... Yeah, audio should be good. Should be good. I don't know. It's just a matter of uh, it. Actually, works. It's just very quiet. Okay. We tried to adjust the volume, and it didn't work. Right. So Joshua Block and Neil Gaffner, two of the fathers of Java, um, they started with this format of Java puzzlers many years ago in 2001. It's like 17 years ago. Did it for a lot of years wrote a book based on the puzzlers that they used uh, during their talks. Anyone familiar with the Java Puzzlers book? You should read it if you want um, to write a better Java. Uh, maybe sometime a second edition will be published, and maybe in this second edition some of the puzzlers that you will try to solve today will actually be. So, yeah. Um, this is me. My name is Baruch. I'm a developer advocate with uh, JFrog. Um, anyone familiar with JFrog? Artifactory? Okay, I have a lot of work to do, but not during this talk. Um, this perfectly describes my, my job. Um, <laughs> plan to drink tonight with you, and this is where I'm going to fix the problem that no one knows about JFrog. Um, yeah, everything will be fine. So I will be your host for the Java puzzlers, but most of the puzzlers um, don't come from me personally. Um, I have a great contributor with me, um, Tagir Valev, uh, this guy. Um, basically, he knows about Java more than most of the people combined. This is his Stack Overflow profile. Uh, you can see here some astonishing numbers, including golden uh, beige for Java, for Java 8, silver for Lambda, gold for Java Stream, etc. He works for JetBrains, um, the makers of IntelliJ IDEA, the only IDE worth mentioning those days. Um, and, and his job there is very interesting. He works on those intentions that show you a, um, error or warnings about the code that you write. And basically the way it works is people open the issues in their back tracker. Huh, why this code shows as valid when actually it doesn't compile or where actually it doesn't work as, as, as expected. And then what Tagir, Tagir does, two things. First, he fixes the inspection, so it will alert as it should, and second, he actually donates a new Java puzzler to this talk. That's the idea. Now, a um, couple of rules before we start, um, so you will know what to expect. Um, entertaining guy on the stage, that would be me. Uh, funny puzzling questions that I promise you will be both funny and puzzling. Uh, um, now, the thing with this format is that it only works if you participate. Um, you will think about the puzzles, you will vote. The problem is that those are very puzzling puzzlers. And most of the time, um, all of the time, you will answer wrong. And that's, <laughs> that's kind of discouraging, right? Because you vote once and it's not that, and you will vote twice and you're wrong again. But you should keep voting. First of all, for the fun of it, but second, um, there are all four uh, options for, uh, for the answers. That gives you 25% of just guessing. <laughs> right. Now, um, if you answer two questions correctly by guessing, that's 12.5%, still fair enough. Your neighbor will think that you are very smart. 
and it didn't cost you anything. So you keep voting even after you realize that it's completely useless. Now, the thing is, I have here t-shirts, those amazing t-shirts, Wonder Frog, I can save your binaries, you can save the world. And that's back to what um, JFrog does, um, saving the world. Uh, so, um, after you voted correctly, I will ask you, how did you know? And um, <laughs> for the rare occasion that you didn't guess and actually knew, I will be more than happy to um, throw a t-shirt to you and that will be your prize for knowing the actual answer. Uh, we have official, a very official Twitter hashtag that we came with when we started the Java Puzzlers, and that will be Java Puzzlers NG. And of course, there is the um, tag of today's conference, which is Walks Day Singapore. Um, very, very important um, detail is the show notes page. So if you go to jeffrey.com slash show notes, you will find a page dedicated to today's talk, in which the slides are, are already uploaded, um, the video will be up as soon as uh, um, it will be um, b uh, produced, and that's hopefully by tomorrow. Um, all the links are there to actual explanations and the correct answers for the puzzlers. Um, the ratings, comments, uh, and a small raffle um, for thanking you for being here. So if you want to take a picture of some uh, slides, that will be the only one that you actually need because you go there and all the slides are there. Easy. Um, and of course, uh, the first rule of the puzzlers, no cheating, and that means do not go and see the slides because they contain the right answers. Don't do that. Um, yeah, because it ruins, kind of ruins the fun. Um, let's try uh, this voting thing and see that you got the idea. So, um, which Java version are you on? Java 7, who is on Java 7? Couple of people on Java 7. How about Java 8? Yeah, everybody on Java 8. That makes perfect sense. Java 9? Anyone? Whoa! Woo! This is fun. Yeah, no one is, okay, interesting. Java 5. <laughs> no, no? Ah, here you go. That was a good, very good release if you remember. Um, lambda, uh, not lambdas, um, um, annotations, uh, generics, auto boxing, nice stuff. Uh, Java 10, anyone? Whoa, oh, nice, couple of events. So you were on Java 9 and upgraded to Java 10 or you skipped Java 9 entirely? Nice. Okay, okay, so here you go. Java 2, anyone? <laughs> Applets. Good stuff, no? Okay, all right. Um, now, yeah, as I promised, um, you will be surprised by what you see, and, and that's, that's okay. That's, that's exactly how it should be. Okay. Let's do that. Um, everything, all the puzzles work or doesn't work as expected on the latest versions of Java 8 and Java 9, probably the same with Java 10. Um, so yeah, that will be me and you, and, and we should start. So the first, uh, the first uh, puzzler is about Punisher, um, this guy, and uh, we, are, we are going to talk about executions. By the way, I think I can switch the same puzzler for um, uh, Thor Ragnarok if someone is a fan about executing people, but also executing vision, but mostly executing people. Uh, yeah, so, um, okay, here we go. Uh, do you see the code from the back? Because there are a lot of seats here in the front. If you don't see, come closer. Okay, so what we see here is um, a Java code, obviously Java 8 with, um, um, with some lambdas over here. So we create a um, single thread executor, and then uh, we create a list of strings, and we submit a closure, a lambda, which 
reads a text file and then um, does something with the sentence. So there are two versions of the same code, one with additional set of parentheses over here and a semicolon over here. So just take a look again and I'll give you the, I'll give you the options. So the options is first line compiles, second line does not compile, second line compiles, first does not compile, same, same, both work fine, and same, same, both won't compile. I basically covered all the possible options for you. Very easy, very easy. C, okay, now we, we, we'll vote, we'll do it properly. Who thinks A? No takers on A. Okay, this is interesting. How about B? Okay, I'll give you that, but that means that all of you should vote for C or D. How about C? Okay, so the rest thinks D? No, come on guys, you don't vote. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. A, who thinks first line compiles, second does not compile? Okay, I vote for A, by the way, if anyone cares. Okay, oh, here we go, thank you. How about B? Any takers on B, couple of hands? Okay, C, okay, most of you think C, how about D? Okay, all right, now that was better. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so the correct answer, um, as I mentioned, <laughs> A, okay, well, we're going to talk about why A, and you can get a t-shirt now. So, um, if you ask me, the second line doesn't make sense. How, how is your Groovy? Who is familiar with Groovy here? Groovy? Anyone? No one knows Groovy? Okay, one of the things, this is Guillaume Laforge, by the way, the head of Groovy project, and um, in Groovy we don't like semicolons. So when we see this code, we say like, okay, this is probably the problem. Of course it's not, but, what the problem? What is the problem? Why the second line does not compile? It means uh, curly brace. It means uh, more than one line. More than one line, okay, then what? Because it doesn't return a value. It doesn't return a value. This is interesting. It doesn't return a value, but should it return a value? Yeah, I mean, you know this API, right? What does executor service dot submit accept as a parameter? Runnable? Huh? Or callable? Thank you very much. Runnable or callable? Good call. So here you see runnable or callable. What are the differences between the runnable and callable? Very good. Callable returns a value. Runnable does not return a value. What else? Exceptions. Runnable does not throw any exception, while callable throws an exception. So now let's look at this code again, and let's try to figure out what is the correct type that this lambda will be cast into. So what do we see in first line? First of all, path.get is something that comes from file.io, java.io package, which means it's almost certainly does what? Draws an IO exception, because it's Java, right? It draws IO exception, and does it return a value? Files.write? Nah, we're not sure. We'll see about that. So if it draws an exception, and we do not declare any exceptions, what's going on here with submit? Will it be runnable or callable? Callable? Okay, so here you go. As we mentioned, executor service accepts both callable and, run and, um, callable and runnable, and this, what we see here, is an implicit return. If instead of providing a statement, we provide an expression, and that's a one-liner, then we do not need to declare return. 
because Java will coerce the return type by whatever this expression returns. If we have, if we want to use it in a full form, which supports multiple versions, and that's with additional set of parentheses, then we have to declare return, and that will be an explicitly return. Now, the problem with this second statement is here, that if we don't write a return here, that means we use the void version, runnable. But runnable does not declare any exceptions. So the exception need to be handled because, as we mentioned, path.get throws an exception. It doesn't. And this is why second line won't compile. Does it make sense? So here we go. Who said return? Yeah, that's a t-shirt. We'll make it easy on you. Even if you didn't provide the full answer, that was close enough. It was a good starting point. OK. Next, those guys. You remember the great movie? Ex of course. So let's speak about those guys. So we have a list. And uh, that's an array list, as you can see. And we have Arnie, Chuck, and Slay in this list. Now we build a stream of this list, and then we call for each method, which accepts a lambda expression. In this lambda expression, we will check if we are talking about Chuck Norris. And if that's the case, we will try, at least, to remove it. Easy. Options. Concurrent notification exception. Array index out of bounds exception. Null pointer exception. Or no exceptions, all good. We successfully removed Chuck from this list. Are you ready? Let's vote. Concurrent notification exception. Any takers? A lot. That makes sense. You modify a collection under iteration and all that. How about array index out of bound exception? Eh, because why not, right? Because it's possible, so everything is possible. Good thinking. Now, pointer exception. Now, let me give you a hint. In Java, puzzlers, if you are not sure, null pointer exception is the safest option. <laughs> there is a very good chance that null pointer exception will happen no matter what. So, null pointer exception, any takers? You don't believe me. OK. All right. Um, no exceptions. We successfully removed Chuck from a list. There are strange people here. It's Chuck Norris. How can you remove from a list? OK. All right. So the correct answer, as I told you, is null pointer exception. Told ya. So, um, anyone has any idea how null point exception even happens here? Because you're using array as an instance. Yeah, no, that's fine. The array is, no, I mean, the array list is fine. It's backed by an array, but that's how array list works. Anyone, any ideas? Yes. Uh, no. For each. Okay. Uh, not exactly. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. This is very good. That's a t-shirt. OK, so what, what's happening here is the following. 
Stream for each, what it actually does, it runs split iterator for each remaining. This is how it's implemented. Now, for each remaining, does check for concurrent modification exception. And this is whatever all of you voted was actually should happen because it does check for concurrent modification exception. But remember how remove from array list is implemented. It adds a null to the end of the array, moving everything else. This is how remove for array list is implemented. So the problem is that check for modification comes in the end of the loop of the iteration. So on the last iteration, when we go to the last element, if null equals check fails with null pointer exception, before getting to the mod count, that will throw a concurrent modification exception. So if it was another type of list, for example, linked in list, it would actually fail on concurrent modification exception as you expected, but not with a real list. That's a lot of fun. Instead of doing that, you should use a new method of list, remove if. Remove if also accepts lambda, in which you express the condition, and then it actually works correctly. Yeah. <laughs> OK, now let's expand the list of our expandables, and let's try to remove all of them. Now, I created a method called kill them all, which accepts a collection of those heroes, expendables, and then we take an iter iterator from it, from this list, go for each remaining on all of them, and if there is next, we move to this next and we remove it. So I iterate through this list and remove each and every one of them, and then print whatever is it in the list. OK? Options. All of them are killed, and the list in the end is empty. We only managed to kill the even ones, and the odd ones remained. All of them survived. We didn't remove any of them. Only odd ones are removed from the list, and the even one ones survived. Those are the four options, and I'll give you a bonus. All answers are correct. <laughs> OK, any takers on A, it actually worked as expected. OK, one brave gentleman in the back. How about? Only odd ones, and when we are going to print, we will only get an even ones. Okay, one gentleman here. They all survived. We didn't remove anything for some weird reason. No takers. How about the other way around? Only odd ones got removed, and we will get a list of even ones. Okay, yeah, a couple of hands. How about all answers are correct? That's, you know, that's, that's okay, but how can it even possible? <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's a good puzzle of thinking, and obviously that will be the right answer. Oh yeah, now, um, any, any idea at all what's going on? <laughs> Depends on the implementation of the collection, exactly. Now. What's going on is you shouldn't do that. What we are doing here is, OK, let me show you first. So let's go back here for a second. What I'm doing here is double iteration. So first of all, I take the iterator, and then I run on this iterator with an another iterator, which is for each remaining. For each remaining is an iterator of its own. And that explains those odd and 
um, and even stuff because when you have two iterations, it does two steps in each and every time, but not for all the implementations. So on a array list, all of them will be actually removed. On linked list, we will only remove the odd ones. On the queue, nothing will happen. On the tree set, we only remove the odd ones and even, one, even uh, remain, right? So that's a t-shirt for thinking about different implementations. Good thinking. Don't do that, basically. And you really don't have to. If you do for each remaining, you don't need iterator before. You can just do it on the collection itself. OK. Now let's talk about single abstract method interface. You know this guy, right? You know what single abstract method interface is? It's an interface which has one abstract method. And it has a special name because those interfaces can be expressed, the, their anonymous implementations can be expressed as lambda expressions, right? So when you write a lambda impression, expression in Java, it has to be backed by single abstract method interface. All those runnables, callables, comparables, and uh, all those are single abstract method interfaces. So here is an interface, just a normal interface, not a functional one, not a single abstract method interface, which is called single, and it will be parameterized with the type T. Now we have a default method here, party hard, and it accepts string as a parameter. We have abstract method here, party hard, will accept t as the parameter. We have drink in method abstract, which accepts t, and drink in which accepts string. So far, so good, just an interface. Here comes the fun part. We extend this interface with another one, it's called single and happy, and this guy is annotated with functional interface. Functional interface annotation will cause an additional check of the compiler to verify that this instance has only one abstract method. Now we type this T with the type string, and now what we actually have in this interface are four different methods, party hard string which is, has a default body, party hard string, which is abstract, drink in string abstract, and another drink in string abstract as well. So here are your options. Cannot work because one single interface means one, a single uh, method means one and not three. Problem is with the party hard T, if we remove it, everything will work as expected. Problem is with the drinking methods, remove one of them and everything will work as expected, or everything will work fine because party hard and drinking are both merged because they are now of the same type, so they're actually the same method, and since we do have an implementation of party hard, we will end up with one abstract method which will be, of course, drink in string. Who thinks A? No, cannot work. That makes sense. How about B? If we remove party hard, one of them, everything will work fine. OK. How about drink in? They conflict with each other. We need to remove one of them. No? Every, everyone thinks that they will merge just fine. OK. And how about it will just work? Yeah, OK, good amount of hands. I don't know why. Did you get how puzzles work by now? 
B is the correct, and I saw a lot of hands for B. Unfortunately, I'm not sure I can give a t-shirt for what, you know what, let's try. Anyone has any idea why this works this way? Yes. It's because uh, uh, it's the same uh, signature. But drinking is also the same signature. That's great. If, if the concrete implementation takes precedence, that's perfect. Because it leaves me with one abstract method. That's exactly what I need. Not the same namespace. It's the uh, implementation uh, of the insert files. The, it's a single team party hard implementation, so it can't be merged with a declaration later when you implement your single happy uh, interface. So it will be a conflict between the definition you may give from party hard, which is still uh, abstract with your own. Can do it quickly. Yeah, uh, well, pretty much, but it's actually simpler. And it works that way because this is what the documentation said. Uh, basically, if you look at the Java language specification, which is a very, any, anyone actually read Java language specification? You should. No, I mean, I know it's boring. I know it's kind of a literature that you prefer not to read on your bedtime, but if you consider yourself a Java engineer, a good Java engineer, that should be on your mandatory uh, reading. Read it once, you'll understand 30% of it, still better than nothing. So yeah, um, 9413 said, it's possible for the interface to inherit several methods with override equivalent signatures. That's how our drinking methods actually collapse. If an interface inherits a default method whose signature is override equivalent with another method inherited by, then a compile time error occurs. Easy. You cannot inherit a default method with an abstract method because this is how it works. OK, now let's check if the sound works for our HDMI. Up, oh, why it didn't play? What happened? What's going on? No. Okay, we'll do something else. The, is this thing on? No. Oh, it's a shame. So, anyone is as old as me as I remember this movie? Oh, come on. Yeah, okay, so you missed, you missed out. This is one of the great stupid com comedies from the 80s called Spies Like Us. It's ridiculously stupid and this is why it's ridiculously funny. So, um, those guys are pretending to be spies and they are going to a mission um, and they pretend to be doctors. So they now go and introduce themselves to other doctors and going like, doctor, 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 and doctor. And let's keep going. Anyway, <coughs> This is almost what we have in Java 9. This is module info. Module, module, requires, requires, exports, exports, opens, opens, uses, uses. Error in every line because, you know, this is, looks like, looks wrong. Can't export package with exports name. Can declare uses in uses. Or compiles just fine. Who thinks error in every line? Okay. How about can't export package with export's name? Nah. Why? 
Can declare uses and uses? Okay, here we go, a couple of people. How about compiles just fine? Compiles just fine. Well, okay, so it should compile just fine. And that's because Java 9 has a new concept which is called context aware keywords. Previously, a keyword in Java is always a keyword and you cannot use it in any context. And that's why we have to come up with some stupid names like class with a K or class with double Z, etc., etc. when you want to express a variable which actually is a class because class is a keyword in any context. Java 9 have context-aware keywords, which means that even if you have requires as a keynote, as a keyword for the declaration of the required package, you can actually use requires as the name of, sorry, required module. You can use requires as the name of the module itself. So it does look like it compiles fine. Uh, okay, there is no audio anyway. But and actually not. Um, yeah, and everything explodes. Um, oh, sorry, that was a spoiler. Anyone has any idea why you cannot use uses and uses? Okay, let's start step before that. What uses actually does? You have no idea about Java 9, do you? Even the guy who actually uses Java 9. <laughs> uh, not necessarily. Well, uses actually refers to a class. Class. So here, what we have after uses is a class name. One or more classes that this module use from another package. The problem is that you cannot declare class here that comes from a default package. So it has to be uses package name dot uses for it to work and if you still want to keep the wonderful structure of everything named after everything else all you need to do is actually add an import by the way the modules the packages are declared in opens so we know the name of the package it will be opens and then the name of the class will be uses so after adding this import line, everything is just fine. Yeah, now if you needed another reason not to use modules, I guess this is it. Okay, let's talk about 42. Everyone knows this reference at least. I forgive you the spices like us, but 42 you all get. That's good. So just to refresh your memory, Hitchcocker Guide to the Galaxy, people came to this supercomputer and asked a question. Now this is the algorithm inside this computer. It's basically if the question that was asked is the ultimate question, the answer is 42. And for the rest of it, it's just null point. No, doesn't matter. That's the only interesting question. Right? This is how it works. So far, so good? Now, they asked this question, and it took for this computer 7 billion years to figure out the answer. And they came back after 7 billion years and asked the question again. Now, the problem is that the computer got old, and its hearing is not what it used to be. So they had to repeat the question. And this is how it looks like. If the question is the ultimate question, then 42. If not, it's worth asking again. Maybe it didn't hear right. So we ask again. 
is the ultimate question, the answer is 42. If it's still not the ultimate question, then the answer is no. Okay? So far, so good? That's the code. Now, let's see what happens. Ultimate question is false. We ask not the ultimate question. What will be the answer? Now, one compile, 42, now pointer exception. How about A? Now anyone thinks that that should, that what's supposed to happen? Oh, nice. People still believe that what's supposed to happen should happen in Java Puzzle. <laughs> okay. Is one compile? Well, that's, that's a, looks like a valid code. 42, something is deeply wrong in our logic. No takers? Okay, now I told you well. No pointer exception? Here you go. Very good. Good stuff. Okay. Um, obviously, it's no pointer exception. Java. And the real question is why? Anyone has any ideas? You already got a t-shirt, but I will fall back to you if no other takers here. Yes. I pass now to system out print land? That's fine, prints now. That's, I guarantee you I did it more than once. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the right answer. Evaluate your size. Uh, I think that should work. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if I'm wrong, I have the extras. Okay. So let's um, let's look at that. The the actual question is the type of the expression, because if it is an opt, if it is primitive. Everything should just work fine. If it is an object, we'll get null pointer exception on, unbo on boxing. No, unboxing, the other way around. Let's talk about that. Um, any engineers in the room, not software engineers, like real engineers? Like, you know, construction, civil, mechanical, and ele el electrical, no? No one, okay, so I'll tell you a story. I used to be a real engineer b before I became a software engineer. Um, so uh, when we have a problem as engineers, as non-mathematicians or not like, you know, uh, physicians. So uh, mathematicians, they solve problems. They write an invention, they, they solve problems. Engineers don't do that. Instead, we have tables. So we open a reference book and we look at the table. So we need to build a bridge, and this is the load it should uh, sustain, and that's the length of the bridge. And we look, and we're like, okay, this type of concrete, this amount of concrete, done. This is how we work with tables. Now, Java also have engineering tables. In Java language specification 15.52, we actually have huge number of tables which tell us which types are created when we have a ternary expression with different types. So let's look at those tables and see what's going on. So the ultimate question, 42 or null, is actually an int and a null. The result of this expression, 42 and null, will, according to those tables, be integer as an object. Having that in mind, we can take a look on the second part. So now we know that this part is an integer because we figured it out. And now if we have an expression of integer and int, that will be this guy, the result will be int. I don't know why, but it will be int. Now, when we have an int, we will try to unbox it, we will get a null pointer. Sorry, we'll try to box it, we will get the null pointer exception. Uh, 
Right. Um, I think we have time for one more. When do we when do we should be done? Six. Six? Okay, one more or we're done? One more. Okay, let's do one more. The one more that we are going to do will be about superheroes, Batman and Superman and the good stuff. So we have a class superhero, which have like that's a normal Java Pojo. It has one um, it has one property strength, which is long. And then we have a constructor, we do a null check, we assign it here, and then we get a getter, and we get a setter, and you know, all the stuff. Equals, hash code, to string, everything as it should. So far so good? Now, we want to add a, compar a com comparing capabilities to this class. We want to compare two superheroes to um, figure out who is stronger, Batman or Superman. So here's the one way to add comparison capabilities. We implement comparable superhero and implement compare to in this way. <coughs> or maybe we should do it this way. That will be our third option. And the fourth option will be none of this, none of this is right. Give you a couple of seconds to spot the right answer. Comparable superhero this, that, comparable superhero me, you, and comparator with compare Batman to Superman. All right. Ready to vote? Who thinks A is the correct answer? One gentleman here. Two. How about B? B is the correct answer? None of you. How about C? Any takers on C? Okay, I guess the rest of you thinks D. That's not the right way to implement comparator. Nice, good thinking, good thinking. Of course, the right answer will be A. That what happens when you confuse comparators. And I will ask the two gentlemen who vote for A, why? I guess the question is the rest of you didn't vote for A because it has this weird first parameter of this, right? Those who did work for A, do you know what this, this is about? Huh? The, but I am in the context of current object. Why do I need to pass it? That looks weird, right? Kind of does. Well, that's a new addition in Java 9. No additions for you, by the way. And it's called a formal parameter. As you can see here, for any method signature, you can add a syntactic device which I find a fascinating name. And that will be this object. It looks pretty redundant. Why would I need to pass this object to this? Because I'm already in this. I don't need to pass it as a parameter. And the answer is annotations. We can now annotate this when it comes as a parameter to our, as an argument, to our method call. It's a new addition, very obviously rarely used. None of you knew it, but now you know. Yeah, no, for this one we won't have time, so um, number 64. Here you go. Thank you very much. A um, couple of minutes for conclusions. Um, the conclusions are Spider-Man, which means with great power comes great responsibility. Java is a powerful language and becomes more powerful with every edition. Streams, lambdas, um, modularity are all examples of more and more powerful features that are added to Java. And that also means more and more ways 
to screw up and shoot yourself in the foot. So, couple of advices of how not to get there. The first will be write readable code. Don't write anything from the code that you just saw. Just don't. Don't do that. That's no, no, no. Sometimes you kind of want to show off because your colleagues will read it and you're like, ah, this is a syntactic device. You didn't know that, right? This is a lot of fun. But then make sure to add comments because probably you will be the one who reads this code and you will need, you will want a time machine to go back in time and kill yourself for doing that. So comment all the tricks. Sometimes it's just a bug. We didn't see bugs in, in, in this um, set of puzzles, but we obviously have much more and some of them are actually bugs. Um, you remember I told you how Tagir contributes puzzlers? First, he fixes the intentions in IntelliJ IDEA. The reason why I don't do this talk in live coding, just writing all the puzzlers, is because if I do it in IntelliJ, there are no puzzlers. All of them are marked as errors, as warnings, as exactly what it should happen. So once you use a good static code analysis, like IntelliJ, everything is just fine. Of course, as I mentioned, documentation is your best friend. I know that we are developers, we hate reading documentation, but it's really worth it. And as I mentioned, the best book that you can read about Java, once you already know Java, will be the Java language specification. And of course, you saw a couple of examples where we used lambdas and streams when they just confuse us. Those double inter iterations, those using for each when we actually should use something else, don't do that. Use them wisely when you, they actually need it. Um, Java is moving very fast now and it introduces new puzzlers for every six months now, every new version. Just think about the amount of puzzlers and the amount of fun we are going to have with VARs in, uh, uh, in Java 10. That will be, we, we are working on it. You have no idea what's going on there. Um, if you encounter something, some puzzler in your work, please send it to us to puzzlers.jeffrock.com and we will pay in t-shirts and in glory by mentioning you in our future session of Java Puzzlers. Um, just a reminder about jeffrock.com slash show notes. All the good stuff is there. The, vi the slides with the correct answers now, the, the video ratings, comments, and, and, and what's not. Um, if you liked uh, what you saw, please, please, please praise uh, on Twitter. Uh, PuzzlersNG is the official hashtag. Uh, I'm at Jay Baruch on Twitter and Voxday Singapore is the hashtag of this marvelous event. Mm, negative feedback is even more important. If you didn't like it, let us know immediately there. <laughs> This is all. Thank you very much. Let's go to the keynote.